The Battle of Grunwald, July 15th, 1410. The Alliance of the Kingdom of Poland and the Grand Duchy of Lithuania face off against the German Teutonic Order in one of the largest battles of medieval Europe. The Polish-Lithuanian forces were led by the Polish King, Ladislaw II, and the Lithuanian Grand Duke, Vytautas the Great. The Teutonic Knights were led by Grand Master Ulrich von Jungingen and Grand Marshal Friedrich von Wallenrode. The Teutonic Order, founded in 1190 in Acker in the Kingdom of Jerusalem, was created to aid and protect Christian pilgrims traveling to the Holy Land. In 1230, the Teutonic Order launched the Prussian Crusade against the pagan Prussian clans of the Baltics. After the expulsion of the Crusaders from the Holy Lands, the Teutonic Knights fully committed themselves to the Crusade in Prussia. With support from the Pope and the Holy Roman Emperor, the Crusade was eventually a success, as by the 1280s, the Teutonic Knights had conquered or converted all of the Prussian territory. Next, the order shifted their attention to the last pagan territory in Europe, the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, raiding Lithuanian lands and eventually gaining control over Samogitia by 1384. The order also came into conflict with Poland. Ironically, it was originally a Polish duke, Conrad I, Duke of Masovia, who, over a century earlier, in 1226, appealed to the Teutonic Knights to help defend his borders against the pagans, inviting them to settle in the region, thus beginning the Prussian Crusade. Although the Polish were originally allies with the Teutonic Knights, the Polish saw the rapid territorial expansion of the order as concerning. Now, with the Prussian Crusade over and the pagans on their borders defeated, Poland and the Order no longer had common cause, and the two nations soon went to war. In 1308, the Teutonic Knights took control of the city of Danzig, and by 1326, annexed the territory of Pomerelia, making Poland a landlocked nation. In 1385, Grand Duke Jogela of Lithuania agreed to marry Queen Jadwiga of Poland. Jogela converted to Christianity and was crowned as Ladislaw II Jagiełło, King of Poland, creating a personal union between Poland and Lithuania. This was significant because the Lithuanian conversion to Christianity symbolically removed the religious rationale for the Teutonic Order's crusading activities in the area. The Teutonic Grand Master responded by publicly contesting the sincerity of the conversion, bringing the charge to papal court. In May 1409, the Samogitians launched a rebellion supported by Lithuania against Teutonic rule. Poland announced its support for the Lithuanians and Samogitians and threatened to invade Prussia. As Prussian troops evacuated Samogitia, the Teutonic Grand Master, Ulrich von Jungingen, declared war on Poland and Lithuania on August 6, 1409, and invaded Poland. The order burned the castle of Dobrin, captured Bob Browniki and Bromberg, and sacked several towns. The Poles organized counterattacks and recaptured Bidgosh, while the Samogitians attacked Memel. However, neither side was ready for a full-scale war, and a truce was signed on the 8th of October. Both sides used this time to prepare for war, gathering troops and engaging in diplomacy sending letters and envoys accusing the other side of various wrongdoings and threats to Christendom. By December 1409, Ladislaw and Vytautis had agreed on a common strategy. Their armies would unite into a single massive force and march on Marienburg, the capital of the Teutonic Order. Meanwhile, the Teutonic Knights took a defensive position, expecting a dual invasion by the Poles along the Vistula towards Danzig, and the Lithuanians along the Niemen River towards Ragnit. Therefore, in order to counter this, Ulrich von Jungingen elected to concentrate his forces in Schwetz, 
a central location from where troops could respond to an invasion from any direction quickly. To keep their plans secret and mislead the order, Vladislav and Vitautis organized several raids into border territories, thus forcing the order to keep their troops in place. The Polish-Lithuanian troops gathered at Czerwinsk, a designated meeting point about 80 kilometers, 50 miles from the Prussian border, where the joint army crossed the Vistula over a pontoon bridge. This maneuver was accomplished in about a week, from the 24th to the 30th of June. On July 3rd, this massive force began to march north towards Marienburg and crossed the Prussian border on the 9th of July. As soon as Ulrich von Jungingen caught word of the presence of the Polish-Lithuanian force, he left 3,000 men at Schwetz under Heinrich von Plauen and marched the main force to organize a line of defense on the Drivens River near Kaurnik. On the 11th of July, after meeting with his war council, Ladislaw decided against crossing the river and instead bypassed the river turning east towards its source. The Teutonic army followed the Drevens River north, crossed near Lubau, and then moved east in parallel with the Polish-Lithuanian army. In the early morning of the 15th of July, both armies met in an area between the villages of Grunwald, Tannenberg, and Ludwigsdorf. According to Polish historian Stefan Krasinski, the Polish-Lithuanian army consisted of 39,000 men, and the Teutonic army, 27,000. While outnumbered, the Teutonic army had advantages in discipline, military training, and equipment, especially due to the order's heavily armored knights. The Teutonic army was also equipped with bombards that could shoot lead and stone projectiles. Both armies were composed of troops from several states and lands, including numerous mercenaries, primarily from Silesia and Bohemia. The Silesian mercenaries were led by Duke Conrad VII, the White of Oles, who was supported by knights from the Silesian nobility, including Dietrich von Kottelen and Hans von Mutschelnitz. Men from 22 different states and regions, mostly Germanic, joined the Order's army. Teutonic recruits and guest crusaders included men from Westphalia, Frisia, Austria, Swabia, Bavaria, and Stettin. Two Hungarian nobles, Nicholas II Garay, and Stibor of Stiberitz, brought 200 men for the Order. Poland brought mercenaries from Moravia and Bohemia. The Czechs produced two full banners under the command of John Sokol of Lamberg. Serving among the Czechs was possibly John Ziska, future commander of the Hussites, while Alexander I of Moldavia commanded an expeditionary corps. Vitautis gathered troops from Lithuanian and Ruthenian lands. Among them were three banners from Smolensk, Led by Ladislaw's brother, Langvinus, and the Tatar contingent of the Golden Horde, under the command of the future Khan, Jalal ad-Din. The supreme commander of the Polish-Lithuanian force was King Ladislaw II Yegewo. However, he did not directly participate in the battle. The Lithuanian units were commanded directly by Grand Duke Vytautis, who was second in command. Vitautis would actively participate in the battle, managing both Lithuanian and Polish units. The armies formed opposing lines along a northeast-southwest axis. The Polish-Lithuanian army was positioned in front and east of Ludwigsdorf and Tannenberg. Polish heavy cavalry formed the left flank while Lithuanian light cavalry and various mercenary troops made up the center and right flank. Their men were organized in three lines of wedge-shaped formations, about 20 men deep. The Teutonic forces concentrated their elite heavy cavalry, commanded by Grand Marshal Frederick von Wallenrode, against the Lithuanians. 
The order hoped to provoke the Poles or Lithuanians into attacking first. Their troops, wearing heavy armor, had to stand in the scorching sun for several hours, waiting for an attack, while the Polish and Lithuanian troops deployed their men in a forest. The order attempted to use artillery to bait the Allies into an attack, but a light rain dampened their powder, and the artillery was not very effective. As Ladislaw and Vitautis delayed, the Grand Master grew impatient and sent messengers with two swords to, quote, assist Vladislaw and Vitautis in battle, close quote. Known as the Grunwald Swords, these swords, meant as a provocative insult, would later become a national symbol of Poland. The battle finally opened when Vitautis, supported by the Polish banners, launched an assault of light cavalry on the left flank of the Teutonic forces. After more than an hour of heavy fighting, the Lithuanian light cavalry began a full retreat. According to one account, the order assumed that victory was theirs, broke their formation for a disorganized pursuit of the retreating Lithuanians, and gathered much loot before returning to the battlefield to face the Polish. However, other accounts describe the retreat as a planned maneuver, a tactic, a feigned retreat, learned from fighting the Mongols. While the Lithuanians were retreating, heavy fighting broke out between Polish and Teutonic forces. Commanded by Grand Comptor Kuno von Liechtenstein, the Teutonic forces concentrated on the Polish right flank. Six of von Wallenrode's banners did not pursue the retreating Lithuanians, instead joining the attack on the right flank.
fighting was intense and raged on for several hours. It seemed that the order was gaining the upper hand, and at one point, the royal standard bearer, Marchin of Rochimomicha, lost the banner of Krakow. However, it was soon recaptured, and fighting continued as Ladislaw deployed his reserves, the second line of his army, to join the battle. Grandmaster Ulrich von Jungingen then personally led 16 banners, almost a third of the original Teutonic strength, to the right Polish flank, and Ladislaw II Jagiewo deployed his last reserves, the third line of his army. The melee reached the Polish command, and one knight, identified as Leopold Diopold of Kokoritz, charged directly against King Ladislaw II, and Ladislaw's secretary, Zbigniew Olzeniki, saved the king's life. Finally, the reorganized Lithuanians returned to the battlefield. They attacked von Jungingen from the sides and the rear. The Teutonic forces by then were becoming outnumbered by the mass of Polish knights and advancing Lithuanian cavalry. As von Jungingen attempted to break through the Lithuanian lines, he was killed. Surrounded and leaderless, the Teutonic Order began to retreat. Part of the routed units retreated towards their camp. The Knights attempted to build a wagon fort as an improvised fortification. However, the defense was soon broken and the camp ravaged. The battle was over and it was a heroic Polish-Lithuanian victory. A papal bull from 1412 mentioned 18,000 casualties. In two letters written immediately after the battle, Ladislaw mentioned that Polish casualties were small. Only 12 Polish knights had been killed. A letter by a Teutonic official mentioned that only half of the Lithuanians returned. The defeat of the Teutonic order was resounding. According to Teutonic payroll records, only 1,427 men reported back to Marienburg to claim their pay. Of 1,200 men sent from Danzig, 
only 300 returned. Between 203 and 211 brothers of the order were killed out of 270 that participated in the battle, including much of the Teutonic leadership, Grand Master Ulrich von Jungingen, Grand Marshal Friedrich von Wallenrode, Grand Comter Kuno von Liechtenstein, Grand Treasurer Thomas von Merheim, Marshal of Supply Forces Albrecht von Schwarzberg, and 10 of the Comters. After the battle, the Polish and Lithuanian forces delayed their attack on the Teutonic capital of Marienburg, remaining on the battlefield for three days. The Battle of Grunwald is regarded as one of the most important battles in the history of Poland and Lithuania. In Lithuania, the victory is synonymous with the Grand Duchy's political and military peak. In Poland, it is a source of national pride and inspired resistance to the Germanization and Russification policies of the German and Russian empires. In the Eastern and Slavic world, the Teutonic Order was portrayed as bloodthirsty invaders, and Grunwald, a just victory achieved by a small, oppressed nation. While Germans generally saw the Teutonic Knights as heroic and noble men who brought Christianity and civilization to the East. Most of the Teutonic Order's leadership were killed or taken prisoner at the battle. Although defeated, the Teutonic Order withstood the siege of Marienburg Castle and suffered minimal territorial losses at the Peace of Thorn in 1411. With other territorial disputes continuing until the Treaty of Melno, in 1422. The order, however, never recovered their former power, and the financial burden of war reparations caused internal conflicts and an economic downturn in the lands controlled by them. The Battle of Grunwald shifted the balance of power in Central and Eastern Europe and marked the rise of the Polish-Lithuanian Union as the dominant regional political and military force.